This is the Deseret News National Edition, when your family needs to know more. Good morning, welcome to our program. I'm Dave McCann. In the wake of very successful midterm elections for Republicans, Utah Senator Mike Lee says conservatives must wage a new war on poverty. Deseret News editor Paul Edwards sits down with Lee to discuss what the senator's reform agenda could mean for American families. So, Senator Lee, you've been identified with a number of young senators that are really working hard to create what's being called a reform agenda for the country. And we're quite interested in better understanding what that reform agenda is and what it means for families. The whole idea of this agenda is to make clear that we're great as Americans, not because of who we are, but because of what we do. What's enabled our country to be so successful and to be the kind of place where someone can be born into poverty and retire comfortably or even wealthy is the fact that we've got these twin pillars of our civilization, our twin pillars of what make our economy a, an upwardly mobile, dynamic thing. Uh, those are free markets and voluntary institutions of civil society. <clears throat> when you've got strong institutions of civil society and free markets, somebody can work their way up. They can find opportunities throughout their lifetimes and their ability to succeed in this life depends on the quality of their service to their fellow beings rather than their last name or the family that they happen to be born into. Now, you talk about free markets as being an important part of this, but there are so many that have experienced challenges in the marketplace. I mean, we've had a tough economic time since 2008, a collapse of a housing bubble. Is the free market really the answer for people that are trying to come up and, you know, um, people that find themselves in poverty? It certainly isn't the only answer. It's not the answer uh, to the exclusion of other things. And the free market, absent strong institutions of civil society, is not going to leave people protected or secure. But when you have both free markets and strong institutions of civil society, you have people with, ho with hope, with op opportunities. You have people who can expect that during their lifetimes, if they work hard, if they play by the rules, uh, that they can get ahead, they can provide for their families, and they can better their situation in life. So talk more about these institutions of civil society. Uh, sounds like a pretty academic term. What, what might these institutions be? Yeah, and it'd be great if we could come up with a better, more succinct description for it. I haven't figured one out yet, and I'm open to suggestions if you have any. The family is first and foremost uh, among the institutions of civil society. That's where people learn the most. That's where people learn to love. That's more or less where people learn to read. Mm -hmm. It's where people learn values. Uh, but beyond that, we have other institutions, including uh, church groups, uh, churches, synagogues, mosques, religious orders of all sorts, fraternal organizations, charitable foundations, and so forth. Basically, any place where human beings come together voluntarily outside of the auspices of government, that's where you see institutions of civil society. Okay, so outside the auspices of government, uh, is that space getting crowded out because of government? Uh, some are suggesting that uh, institutions like the family uh, can be best supported by government programs that can step in to help the family when it's in need. Yeah. Or is, is, is that a help or is it a crowding out? Well, it's an interesting question. It brings up a, a, a pretty complex uh, a set of questions. The bottom line is that as government gets bigger and bigger, as it gets more and more intrusive, it has the potential to weaken institutions of civil society. As it flexes its muscle, the muscle of ins uh, institutions of civil society may start to atrophy. It's not to say that no government would be preferable. We need government. We need government there in order to protect people from those who would harm them in, in order to maintain order. But there is a balance. And there is a point at which if government gets too big and too powerful, these institutions of civil society will start to suffer. They'll become weaker. And as that happens, this economic opportunity society that we have becomes threatened. It becomes less and less possible for people to work their way out of poverty or work their way up the economic ladder. So in very practical terms, what is it that a reform agenda in terms of policy can do to strengthen these aspects of civil society you've talked about. And, and really for someone who's 
very lo low on that ladder that's at the bottom of the ladder, what are the things that policy can do to help them to rise up? A reform agenda is driven by the mindset that everything we need to do needs to focus on strengthening institutions of civil society, including and especially the family, mm -hmm. and on strengthening free markets, making sure that these institutions of civil society and free markets function well, function properly, function fairly, and then let them do what they do best. Because it's when government operates in that space, it's when government allows those things to flourish, that everyone does better, that everyone has an equal opportunity in the race of okay, life. Okay, so specifically, something like an earned income tax credit, where, where does the reform agenda look at a policy like that that's trying to provide uh, increased uh, cash and incentive for work? Well, one of the things that we look to in a reform agenda is whether or not we're making it possible for American families to provide for their own needs. And one of the reasons why I think we need an additional child tax credit is that right now our tax policies in this country tend to punish <laughs> parents. They tend to punish people for getting married or being married, and they tend to punish people for having children based on the way our tax system interacts with our senior entitlement system. It un unfairly par punishes parents and married couples. And so uh, this is something that we need to look to, that we need to eliminate, so that we're at least not hurting the most important institutions of, uh, institution of civil society of them all, uh, which is families. Utah Senator Mike Lee with Deseret News Editor Paul Edwards.